How's it going guys? Anthony from Sales 4 by 4 here and welcome back to another episode on the Barra Shorty. So you might be asking yourself, why is there an engine crane there? Um, and that is because I've done some very hard thinking and that is about the engine position and modifying the sump. As you saw in the last episode, I was going to um, strip the sump off and like cut it all up and remake it to clear the diff. But if I just move the motor 50 mil back, it'll solve that issue and it won't impede too much on the drive shaft if it's only 50 mil. So um, what I've decided is to make custom engine mounts and then offset the gearbox cross member um, to give me that room, which would also give me more room to do the aircon condenser that's at the front and thermo fans and radiator and everything. So yeah, come with me and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So these are the mounts that are currently in the motor. This is a BA mount and as you can see, the bolt is mounted in the center and to the side. So this mount is already offset this way. Um, but the factory FG mounts, which are over here, I'll show you this. Um, the factory FG mounts, as you can see, are bolted, have bolts on each side and it's mounted in the middle. But these have a different mounting uh, system on the on the front of it here, which doesn't work in the patrol because it's too wide. So I thought, why not combine the two? So this is a prototype that I've made. This is just something I worked together in about an hour. It'll be much stronger than this. But um, as you can see, it's got those mounts. And then we drill a hole here. And let's take it over here. Let me show you this. What I'm talking about. So as you see, that mounts in the same positions as that one. But it'll give you about 50 mil to mount this, which will push the motor back. So that's what we're going to be making in this episode. Um, but to do that, we're probably going to have to uh, remove the turbo as well. And while I'm at it, I'm going to cut this battery tray out. But not only is it going to move that back, it means it's going to move the gearbox cross member back, which is down on this side. Um, and my plan for this is, at the moment, unless I think of something else by the time I get to it, is to cut it here, move it back, re-weld it and then add some bracing on the side or something to strengthen it, uh, strengthen it. Uh, but that's what I'm thinking at the moment we'll see how we go with that but we'll start with the mounts um, fabricating those up and uh, see how we go so yeah let's get right into it I think we'll start by removing the turbo um, that way we get a lot more room to do everything else this isn't bolted up so that comes off easy um, and yeah let's do it forget how big this thing is and how much it weighs. I swear it's like 10 kilos. It's massive. Anyway, that's what you need for a thousand horsepower apparently. So for the battery tray, I'm just going to start by um, trying to drill out a few of the spot welds that are in there and then try and pry it out. Hopefully the grinder doesn't have to come out for this one, but uh, we'll see how we go. Now that the battery tray is off, I'm going to start fabricating up the mounts. Um, as you can see, I've got a few test pieces here just trying to set up the welder and that. I was going to use 10 mil plate, but I don't think my welder is liking it too much and I don't think I'm going to get proper penetration with the weld. So I'm going to use 8 mil, which I have this piece, some scraps that I need to cut up to make it work, but we'll get there. Um, so basically, I'm just going to trace around this, cut it out with the grinder um, and then use a flat piece to kind of get all that little piece of rust off because it's just a scrap piece got a bit of rust on it um, and yeah so make it good for welding and then we can drill the holes and do all the rest of it so yeah let's trace it out all right so i've cut it out i also grinded it to get all the rust off because that was a rusty piece so it's pretty good now um, so that's that and then yeah this is the old engine mount put it on top of each other that looks pretty good to me so all i got to do now is mark out these holes drill them out and then we can start uh, fabricating this part that goes up here so yeah let's mark the holes and drill them because we want retribution oh yeah we want retribution oh yeah we want retribution
I just finished uh, making one of the mounts. Um, don't mind the world, they're not perfect, but they do the job and they are going to get grinded down. But maybe they won't need to get grinded down because uh, we had Matt come in and he has done the design on AutoCAD, so I'll let him take it from here. Good afternoon. So look, Anthony's done a great job with the initial design here. Uh, he's got the principles right. The only problem I saw was that this is a substantially smaller mount than what we've currently got in the car and I was not convinced that these pieces were going to be enough to withstand the uh, rugged vibration, well, not so much vibrations, but the forces exerted on this part under load. So Anthony, come have a look at uh, this. What we've got here is the simulation in Autodesk. So we can see here that this part is going to deform quite substantially under some of the high stresses uh, experienced while driving with a thousand horsepower and off-roading <laughs> and off-roading yeah so we're not going to go ahead with this design we're going to go back to the drawing board and, and see what we can come up with and then yeah make another one and uh do it all again do it all again hopefully only one more time not 10 more times over <laughs> That's it. well we'll take control of some of the generative design elements yeah. of the program where we can put in exactly how or the result of what we want and it will go away and do some of the thinking so that's going to be our next step that's it all right so we finished making the engine mounts um and as you can see the first mount that we made was here and then we moved on to that which was on the model which was not going to be able to take the loads we've redone the model with these ones and these greatly exceed what we need them to um, so yeah, they're way overkill, but I'd rather have overkill and know that the motor's definitely not going to fall out when I jump a sand dune or something. Um, so yeah, that's them. And yeah, those are the FG mounts. So we've kind of made a hybrid between these FG mounts and the BA mounts that are in there. And those are these ones here. We've still got to drill a hole in the middle, but first we're going to um, lift the motor up a little bit, remove the old BA mount so we can get a measurement to see where the hole needs to be drilled. Then we can mount, th mount these in and uh, go from there. I also had to take the fuel rail off to put the hook back on so we can hook it up um, and then we can put that back on later once we've repositioned the engine. Alright, so we've got everything ready. We put the lifting point on the barrel so we have to take the fuel rail off for that. We've got the crane in position, the trusty seatbelt, everything's ready to go. What we're going to do now is um, unbolt the engine mounts from underneath, lift up the motor, take them out um, and then transfer the mounts, what is it called? The rubber mount onto the other one and then bolt it back together and hopefully she goes in but we'll see how we go. You can see the riding on the pavement, young kids that growing up in basements, online a whole new generation, I'ma make mine so you better go take it, always they need a new replacement, decentralized can't contain it, we're changing lives, yeah upgrading, call it to us. Alright, so we just finished putting this on just as a test um, it all fits up nicely i'm gonna have to bore out some of the holes a little bit more but that's all right we've got it on there now we're going to take it back off get a measurement um for this hole that we drill for the engine mount to go on it's a bit hard to see but we've made a mark here so we've basically measured from this back face to there to the center of that hole and then replicated it on this and now we're going to drill that um, and that should give us the same mounting some hole Alright, so we've finished drilling the hole. We also had to drill this little pilot hole for this kind of locking pin that's in here to stop this rotating. Came out pretty good. It fits nice and flush in there, so it doesn't rotate, which is good. Um, so yeah, pretty happy how they came out. Now we've got a fault to mark. Test fit everything and then pull it back out again and give it a fresh coat of paint to stop it rusting. And uh, yeah, it should be, super, it should be sweet. Demons quiet, yeah, we were built to drive, yeah. I think that we've all had enough. Keep you up at night, yeah. Make all the demons quiet, yeah. We were built to drive, yeah. in and now what we have to do is undo the gearbox cross member mounts and then we should be able to push the motor back or we might even have to roll the car forward whatever will make it work and then we can bolt this down and then we can see where the cross member will sit and then we can make something work on that end but let's try get this side first working and then we'll worry about the part uh, that side <laughs> Lined it 
it all up and now we're gonna try and lower the engine into the hole so we'll see how we go here anyway. Now I'll release it a bit more. That's all the weight taken off it. So now it's getting fully held in by the new engine mounts. Let's see that. So we've got the motor sitting in, we've, we've bolted it up. Um, it's sitting pretty good at the moment. We've still got to modify the gearbox um, cross member, but I think that's a tomorrow problem. But for now, since the motor's moved back, we're gonna do a test fit of the thermo fans, which Matt is currently installing on the shroud. So once those are in, we'll lift this into place and bolt it in and then check our clearances. But uh, just looking at it by eye, seems like there'll be plenty of room now with that extra 50 mil that we've gained. <laughs> Now that we've got the thermo fans in, you can see there's plenty of room there um, for our belts and everything else. Um, so yeah, pretty happy with that. Much better than before where it was pretty much almost touching this. You couldn't fit even a thermo fan in there. So yeah, pretty happy with that. Um, all the mounts are in nicely. Obviously we've got the gearbox cross member still to do. That's the factory one that you can see there, which I've removed from the car. And I'll show you the one that we've currently got in there, which is a prototype at the moment. Um, so that's that. I've just made a design up and drew it all up and got it laser cut, but I done some of my calculations wrong and I didn't get those little cutouts perfect, as you can see with that. So I've got to remake that. And also on that side, it's very close to the sump. I think it's even touching just barely. So I'm going to get that more offset back and give that more clearance. As well as, um, I know what you guys are thinking, oh, it's just a place not that strong. So yeah, we will be putting some box section, probably that was sitting down there, 50 by 50. Uh, along there on a nice 45 like the ends make it all nice um, as well as putting those sections on the top Which are these um, to mount the gearbox so yeah quite a bit of work left in that and before we do that We're probably gonna get the transfer case on just to see how everything's sitting and get the height of it and everything and make sure everything works instead of making it and then realizing that doesn't fit on properly so yeah bit of work to do so in that case I think I'm gonna leave that for another episode and we'll have to conclude this episode here But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed um, and obviously, yeah, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more. And yeah, we'll catch you guys next time. Have a good one.